Hello everybody. Um, I would like to um, introduce you to my new coil system for my future projects, which is going to replace my standard bipolar coil I used the last two years. So um, it was February 2011 when I first announced I will use a bipolar coil as a power supply and. In all these two years, I used this um, bipolar Tesla coil very frequent in, in many, many experiments, and it was quite useful. But the problem with this coil is it was never really proper um, adjusted, config configured. It was only working on very high voltage, and I'm more and more now working with solid state technology where the, where the voltage is around 1,000 volt, not higher is higher current in order to um, achieve then a higher yield let's say a higher um, potential electrical potential I did decide to scale up my bipolar Tesla coil so what you see here is an modified and optimized um, first phase system of my enhanced bipolar Tesla coil it is asynchronous designed, designed. It has a very strong, strong coupling via bifilar coil as a primary, and it has also an asynchronous top load configuration on both sides that will become apparent when we look at the scope. And you will also notice um, when it was a spark text that there is much more voltage involved in the system. So um, just a standard. Let's say it's 100 volt I have. Let's just assume, or let's just um, conf compare it with uh, the coils I had before. Let's say 10,000, 20,000 volt, small spark. Here I have 50, 60, 7,000 um, volt, and that's that's easily higher achievable. Let's just make the comparison to my previous coil. So I have an old picture. On this picture you see is a standard coil, so the standard coil was just as a normal primary winding in the middle and then later on I potted it and I used then on right and left hand side just um, symmetrical um, the spheres. Here you see in comparison the standard coil without the spheres compare the dimension. I have now energized the system to 2-3 volt. I um, want to give you a little bit of a rundown on uh, the properties of the setup here. So you have a 5 to 1 ratio on the secondary so that means width is 15 centimeter, length is 75 centimeter. So it's approximately twice as much windings as I was on my previous bipolar Tesla coil. It's about um, 1,700 windings AWG26. The resistance of the secondary coil is about 72 ohms, but I measured it here on on um, here on the output, which is causing additional resistance because it's a it's an iron rod. Uh, steel rod, sorry. The primary is bifilar wound, 24 centimeter in diameter, 25 centimeter long. Um, very strong coupling, important for um, my experimentation based on solid state amplification, class E, class F amplifiers, and so on. It's counterclockwise wound. That means I have positive charge here on that side, and I will have negative charge here on, on that side. Okay, now let's go and have a look how it looks like in detail on the oscilloscope. Now what you can see here are the two waves from, from both oscilloscope probes on channel 1. I have here the top side, that means the positive side. So it's a high-powered electrical, high electrical potential on that side, 
and I have the low powered high current side on the bottom on channel 2. You see the division is the same. What you can read out here on top is at the moment on channel 102 volt. I have about 2-3 volt only at the moment into the system DC and you see on the bottom let me toggle it over to the other side I have to get the cursors on let me go to channel 2 channel 2 is 54 volt at the moment so it's half of it um, 102 volt on channel 1 now let me increase that a bit let's see I stay on channel 1 I go to 10 volt input so that's 10 volt let me get that down for you So 10 volt, yeah, it looks proportional. So, so I have 237 volt in channel one. So literally, so from from five, four, five uh, volt up to 10 volt, it's twice the amount of of voltage on the upside on the bottom. Let's get it in here again. Channel two, 127 volt. Yeah, it was 54 volt before. Also almost twice. Let's increase it further. See how that looks like. Let's go to 20 volt. Twenty volt on channel two, two hundred sixty. Yeah, it's it, it looks it looks proportional. Um, channel one. 388 volt. So here you have the same division to get to give you an idea. Um, 500 volt division at the moment. Yeah, so it looks quite good. Very important to note here what you can see. Let me get it up a bit further. You see the positive side here on channel 1 that means it goes up first and down and here it goes down first so that is negative so that's my south pole here and that is my north pole there very important the south pole is always uh, is always the direction to the ground so that's the grounding um, um, connectivity if you want and that's always the um, transmitting side or the high side if you want going up so that would be a natural setup um, for the coil now let me have a look how it looks like um, charged up uh, by spark and I will also add um, frequency modulation so you get also a sound feeling um, um, for the spark and, and, and for the visibility of the spark on top. When I add frequency modulation you can see there is much more going on here so you have various patterns going in and out see here when I that tune in that at the moment is 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 the highest value here. Um, at the moment, at the moment as well. So it's about year 25, um, 28 volt put in. So that has highest yield. Now let me go back to um, to the top loads and let 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 it spark a bit. So I put now 30 volt into the system and um, we'll do now a spark test using a large um, fluorescent bulb. Watch uh, the sound and um, this frequency. Over there. So that's 30 volt at the moment, and we had in our system we had before 100 volt. Um, let me go to the higher value then, and then I will compare the um, the spark characteristics on the positive side and show you that on the negative side. Going up to. 
So let's have a look. Long, straight, So now let's go and have a look on um, the low electric potential side. Now let's see how this spark looks here. Of course I still have potential here, still too much, so I will reduce it. But look at the spark, how it looks here. It's very fat, very wide, and there's a, you can't see it probably, but there's a large corona around it, a white beam, so that, that carries a lot of current here. And you see on a, on a fluorescent bulb, the reaction to the light, depending on the distance of and I can tell you it's all getting very very hot in my hand so that's at the moment yeah it is about 100 volt so that's where we have been before still a lot of potential. So that's all for me for now. Thank you.